guys, um, so I'm off trekking up to Everest Base Camp early next year. Um, I thought I'd get my gear ready uh, well in advance and I thought I would share with you what gear I'm taking. So here we go. So uh, typically, uh, most people doing Everest Base Camp, they will be taking two packs with them. They'll be taking a rucksack like this. In addition to that, they'll also be taking a large pack like this. Um, I'm just going to take this off a second. So typically, um, trekkers will go with an agency and they'll be using the services of a guide um, and a porter. Um, what usually happens, they give this pack here, which they're given about a maximum of about 10-15 kilograms uh, for the porters to take. Um, and then the trekkers themselves take a 30 or 40 litre rucksack, uh, which they take as a day pack to carry things like their waterproofs, um, snacks, extra warm clothing, camera gear and a few books and stuff. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, the purpose of this video and what inspired me is that every video I seem to look at on YouTube um, people are doing the same thing, they're taking two packs um, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to take um, and for one I'm certainly not going to take this pack so this pack can go away and that leaves me with this and I'm pretty confident um, I've already done Nevis Base Camp a few years ago I've done the Annapurna circuit, uh, the Inca Trail, a few treks in the Alps and I'm pretty confident that everything I've got in this pack, even though it's only a 33 litre, will be sufficient uh, for what you need for every space camp, even though um, it is in the winter. So here goes, uh, this pack uh, as it is weighs just under 7 kilograms, um, that is minus food and water. Um, I won't be taking any food other than maybe mints, a few sweets um, and maybe a couple or three litres of water, uh, whatever that weighs. Um, so here we go. The first thing uh, come out of my rucksack is my sleeping bag, um, arguably the largest and heaviest item I'll be taking on the trek. Um, if I can get it out. So I've chosen a three season uh, down sleeping bag. Uh, this one in particular is about 850 field power, uh, top quality goose down. Uh, total weight is roughly 750 grams. Um, Arguably not quite warm enough, some people would say you need a four season sleeping bag um, but I've chosen to go slightly lighter um, and I can always wear a few layers inside, inside my sleeping bag um, if I'm really cold. So that's that. Another important piece of equipment is a down jacket. Uh, this weighs about 600 grams. Um, Three season again, packs down quite small and light. Then in addition to that we have a little pack of books, um, a guide to doing the Everest Base Camp Trek, um, a little book on altitude sickness and a book on wilderness first aid. Um, but the three of them are kind of pocket size, doesn't weigh too much. I'm going to move this here. Then we have my clothing, so we've got um, a very thin base layer long sleeve top, also that can be doubled up uh, as something to sleep in. Um, socks and undies, basically I've chosen uh, smart wool socks, I'm taking a total of three pairs, I'm going to vary the weight of the socks. So I've got a thin pair um, to be worn at low altitude on warm sunny days, a medium pair of smart wools um, and a thicker pair for later on in the trek 
uh, if it gets really cold. Three pairs of boxes. A nice woolly beanie hat. A scrunchie I've got here, which is, I'm sure all of you have heard of scrunchies. Um, can be used for a multitude of things, but very small, easily packable, and very lightweight. Uh, that's my third pack of undies. What else have we got in here? A spare set of waterproof stuff sacks. Um, for the purpose of this video, I haven't used them, um, but normally I'd have my sleeping bag in one and my down jacket in another, and a couple of spares just for other stuff. What else do we have in here? Well, we have um, a cap to be worn uh, as a sunshade for my head. Uh, also protects my glasses um, from the rain. Thin pair of uh, liner gloves. Um, again, quite lightweight and small. Another pair of thicker, warmer gloves. Then we have a sleeping bag liner. Um, I've chosen to go with uh, silk because it's uh, lightweight, thin and comfortable, very breathable, packs down small, albeit very expensive. Um, T-shirt, um, again I've gone for um, a smart wool kind of trekking top. It's likely to be, um, even though it's winter, it's going to be very warm um, in the daytime, especially at lower altitudes. Um, I'm like to sweat quite a lot, especially whilst wearing a pack. Um, so it's essential you don't wear anything cotton and instead use something highly breathable, lightweight and comfy. A pair of trekking trousers or pants for you Americans. Um, these again are quite uh, thin, lightweight, uh, zip off so I can wear them as shorts um, when it's warm and as full trousers when it's colder. Um, they're kind of shower proof. Um, and packed down quite small and light, about 300 grams. What else do we have in here? It's like, uh, it's like Christmas. Second glove. I've got a lightweight, kind of a thermal layer, come fleece, long sleeve top with a hood. Um, that's one of my biggest items after my down gear. Um, that weighs about 400 grams. Compacts relatively small compared to a traditional fleece um, and is more wind resistant than a traditional fleece also. Um, waterproof jacket. Um, I'm actually in two minds whether I need to take a waterproof. Um, some would say, you know, I'm trekking in the Himalayas. Not taking waterproofs is absolutely crazy. Realistically, it's going to be winter. It's not going to rain much. The forecast for that time of year is not really any rain at all, it's very rare. Um, if anything it's going to snow. Uh, my down jacket is shower resistant, my trousers um, are shower resistant. This waterproof however only weighs 200 grams, packs down really really small, down to about the size of a, of a large apple. Um, if anything uh, it acts as another layer, it's very um, breathable, very windproof, uh, and for the sake of a couple of hundred grams, I'm going to take it anyway. Um, where else do we have? Document, wallet, um, so this is where I'll keep all my money, all my bank cards, passport, flight documents and tickets, um, photocopies of important documents, um, everything of importance pretty much document and money wise goes in there. Uh, then we have this little item which is a, a bin bag liner. There's a variety of options of how best to keep your stuff uh, protected from water should it rain or dust and muck. Um, things which are essential, down jacket, uh, sleeping bag, I'm going to uh, double up. So I'm going to, first of all, put them into a waterproof stuff sack. Um, then also I'm going to use this as a rucksack liner. Um, pretty much not any money at all, lightweight, thin, fits into a rucksack really easy. Um, there 
could obviously the other option of a uh, an outer bag for your rucksack. Um, but I've decided not to go with that option. Uh, what else have I got in here? So I've got a um, a water purifying kit. I've chosen to go with a Sawyer uh, water filter. In addition to that, I've got some chlorine uh, diox tablets. Um, you do need to drink a lot of water on the trek, so uh, maybe kind of three, four litres a day. Um, water is very expensive, especially the higher up you get. So I've decided to uh, filter my own, save money. Um, and also I don't plan to take too much, uh, maybe a litre or two at a time, drink that and then refill from waterfalls, streams, whatever, and filter it as I go along. Also I've got a first aid kit. Um, quite a small first aid kit, but it's amazing um, what you can cram into a little pack like this. Again, it's waterproof, lightweight pack, um, and there's a selection of items in there. Uh, which I'll do another link to actually, um, wilderness, trekking, high altitude, uh, first aid and medications. So watch out for that link. Um, mobile phone, can't go anywhere in the world without a mobile phone. Also backs up as um, a camera and again in a waterproof carrier. Don't want to risk that getting wet. Um, so a pair of sandals. They'll be essential to um, take off my walking boots at the end of the day, um, give my feet a bit of a breathe, uh, wear these in the showers, um, just wear them in the huts in the evening. Um, and again, small, packable, lightweight. Uh, what else do we have? We have got toiletries pack in here. Lightweight trekking towel. Um, I don't think I'll be showering that often during the trek. Uh, maybe I'll even go as long as uh, several days or a week or two without having a shower. Um, so I don't want to take a massive, heavy cotton towel. Um, and to be honest, even most trekking towels are a little on the large size side. So um, I'm going to take this little tiny one here. Plenty sufficient, I think. Folds out to kind of this size. Plenty big enough, really, for one person. Um, now I've got my toiletries bag here, toiletries bag, miscellaneous bag, and last but not least, I've got my toiletries bag, or toileting bag, as opposed to toiletries. Um, so in there I've got uh, wet wipes, uh, compressed toilet roll, and hand sanitizer gel. Um, I don't think any of the toilets in the huts on route to base camp will have toilet rolls, so it's essential you take your own. Um, I'm quite conscientious of uh, hygiene, don't want to get any stomach bugs to uh, cramp my trek. Um, and also, wet wipes uh, can be a make do wash um, if you don't want to uh, have a shower during the trek. So, that's that pack. And of course, not forgetting walking boots I'm not wearing at the moment, lightweight, canvas and Gore-Tex lined, or waterproof guide, doesn't have to be Gore-Tex obviously, uh, ankle boots, reasonable amount of support, but lightweight, flexible, comfy, don't need breaking in, um, so that's what I'll be taking. So, in case you're wondering what's in these two little bags, uh, toiletries bag miscellaneous. In the toiletries bag, we have uh, toothbrush, toothpaste. I've chosen to go with a full tube of full weight, full fat toothpaste. Can't see any point in saving weight on taking half a tube or a tiny tube. I'm going to be trekking for a few weeks, so this should be sufficient. Toothbrush. A backup toothbrush, small and lightweight, just in case. Don't want to risk uh, not being able to clean my teeth. Travel wash, uh, we can doubles up as shower gel, but also as a fabric wash. I can clean my own clothes and undies. As I said earlier, I'm only taking three pairs of boxers, three pairs of socks, so that will be invaluable. Um, 
a spork. Arguably I don't need it, but it's small, it's lightweight, I'm going to take it anyway, you never know. Um, small mirror, that's not because I'm vain and I want to look good during the trek, um, but it's kind of a first aid item in case I get things in my eye, um, whatever. Uh, spare torch, mini mag light, sun cream, high factor, high factor 30, uh, but you can go as far as um, 40 or 50. Now scissors, uh, high sun protection factor um, lip balm, and that's pretty much it for the toiletries bag. Uh, and in the miscellaneous bag, we have a head torch, let's have a look now. A travel plug adapter, spare bungee cord, sewing kit. Super glue, padlock. Um, I've took some gaffer tape, a selection of different gaffer tapes, rather than take a whole massive roll, far too big and bulky. I've wrapped them around a couple of pencils, uh, much more lighter. Spare buckles, headphones, a few little pegs so I can use my bungee um, as, a, as a clothesline, um, a few little bits and bobs safety pins um, <clears throat> that folks is pretty much it for what I'm taking um, the only things I haven't included is a camera which I'm yet to buy actually um, and a few charging cables maybe I'll even go for a luxury solar charger um, we'll wait and see okay thank you for watching and uh, enjoy my video thank you